You're watching Unrelent Gaming. This is Vegeta, the Prince of all Saiyans. Make sure you subscribe to Unrelent Gaming and push the like button for me. Or else you'll be Hakai! Not Beerus! You know how this works. Make sure you enable all notifications on the channel and watch the entire video all the way through. And don't forget to follow Unrelent Gaming on both Instagram and Twitter. That's enough! On with the video! So with Dragon Ball Super Manga Chapter Number 83 now setting up the stages for Gas to return back onto planet Sorel, by finally taking the approach to eliminate Vegeta, Goku, and Granola once and for all, as we now also begin to understand more of what went down involving both Bardock and Gas 40 years ago, on top of the fact of Whis now informing Goku that he needs to discover who he truly is by developing his own version of Ultra Instinct, with Goku now being stuck in a rut in trying to do his best to calm his emotions, the million dollar question going forward is will Goku be able to not only tap back into the mastered level of Ultra Instinct, but will Goku also go as far as to discover a new evolution to Ultra Instinct only exclusive to him, or with by the time Goku ends up trying to do this, will Gas ultimately follow through in obliterating everybody once and for all? As a quick little heads up before diving deeper into this conversation, if of course you guys just so happen to be new to this channel and have a love and passion for all things Dragon Ball related, then I do encourage you guys to go on over and smash that subscribe button and give this video a big fat thumbs up right now by smashing that like button down below. If you're not only excited to see how this is going to end involving both Gas and our heroes, but at the same time, if you're also kind of curious to see what Goku's potential new evolution might be, as joining me right now to further discuss the concept of Goku's potential evolution while under Ultra Instinct is my good friend and Dragon Ball YouTuber Super Saiyan Paul. Now, Paul, I honestly really don't see this being the case where Goku somehow ends up stacking Super Saiyan with Mastered Ultra Instinct, although I do believe that it may be a possibility in the future, but if that were to be a thing right now, I think it would be a little bit too early considering the fact that we've seen Mastered Ultra Instinct be utilized in two separate arcs before that being the Tournament of Power and the Moro arc. So to that, we saw it early on with Dragon Ball Super Manga chapter number 73 with Granola's clone. But from there, as we moved on forward, we really didn't see Goku kind of reactivate that because of course, well, he was tired, he was depleted, and he just couldn't stabilize his emotions, which is kind of contradictory to what Maris had been telling Goku in the Moro arc because the entire lesson that Maris had presented was for Goku to hone Ultra Instinct to such an extent that once he was able to tap into such a power, he would never fall to anyone again, right? So what I wanted to ask you is what do you think is going to happen involving Gas versus Goku eventually enough once Gas ends up returning? Because for me, I'm calling it down the middle. If anything, we're going to see Mastered Ultra Instinct Goku return once again to fight Gas, but I'm not entirely sure as to what to make of what Whis had said because that could imply anything at this point because at the same time, we've kind of seen Goku merge the principles of Ultra Instinct with Super Saiyan God and with Super Saiyan Blue. So in an essence to give Goku this full powered Super Saiyan Ultra Instinct form, I think would be a bit too early. But what I wanted to know from you is what you believe the approach is going to be. And I wanted to ask everybody else listening as to what you guys believe the overall narrative is going to be moving forward. If we're going to see simply mastered UI Goku versus Gas, or if there's going to be simply more to it and your overall expectations once Gas inevitably ends up returning on planet Sorel. So let's assume this is the final battle between Gas versus Goku and we're about to see the climactic moments here with Gas rushing back into battle we got 20 minutes to spare Goku's going over Bardock's memories tapping into whatever he did back then 40 years ago to defeat Gas I feel as though once Gas gets back to the battlefield it's gonna be whatever state of mind Goku's in whether whether it be the Saiyan heritage like being unlocked whatever we find out Bardock did in chapter 83 whether it be a transformation whether it be harnessing some some exclusive saiyan power something like that kind of similar to what we kind of foreshadowed in 82 where you have to find your own way with ui make it yours him finding a way to kind of merge the two and showing us that 
that versus gas is what I think is going to inevitably happen. But it's going to be an all out fight because if this is the quote unquote strongest in the universe. Goku powering up right now to match that and showing that weakness through gas and tiring him out is probably the best course of action. And him showing this new state of UI is going to be really, really a showstopper. I feel as though if this is going to be the climactic battle, it has to be something like that. And probably a new visual transformation of anything showing that Goku has tapped into the inner Saiyan, the inner Saiyan le legacy, the lineage, all of that stuff, especially this being a Saiyan battleground kind of makes the most sense, really tying it all together. But him going into UI, using whatever new ability he might find from this, because you saw like the his whole body got engulfed in some sort of aura. We don't know what exactly that is. In my head, I'm picturing the Broly movie when Broly had powered up, but you saw that green aura around him and his eyes turned golden. He wasn't quite Super Saiyan yet, but he had that type of ability. That's what I'm picturing in my head. And maybe Bardock top tapped into something like that similarly, and that's how he was able to be gassed before. Not kill him, but just tire him out and probably beat him. I think the same exact thing's gonna happen here. I don't see Goku being the one to kill him, honestly. I feel as though he's gonna beat him in battle. He's gonna be able to master you in the state where he's not gonna like lose the energy beforehand i think he's gonna outlast him take him down and then we're gonna have to see some final moments between him and elect because of how he even planted the seeds can you really trust your brother we're gonna have to hear more about that otherwise that kind of just leads off to an end ended off plot point where that was just a random um, moment just to stall for time but that's a really, really good point to dive off of for further on in the arc if anything happens afterwards. So him being the strongest in the universe, we're going to see a climactic battle. We're going to see UI. We're going to see UI like we have never before. And I want to see in Chapter 83 what Bardock did. What did he do to defeat this guy? Was it a transformation? Will that transformation be com combined with whatever Goku's doing here? And it has to be something Saiyan exclusive. This way, it kind of stresses the fact, know who you are, know what you're capable of, know your legacy, know your lineage. It might even make Vegeta proud on the sidelines, but I don't know. What do you think from there? Well, I think that if anything, Goku should go back into the mastered level of Ultra Instinct and only use that, right? Now, the reason why I say this is because the arc kind of started with both Goku and Vegeta being at a competition with one another, having to kind of observe one another's training and to see now Vegeta obtain the Hakaishin power of Ultra Ego and for Goku to take more of a angelic path in mastering Ultra Instinct, I think that it only suits the narrative for us to see what mastered Ultra Instinct could really do against the new so-called quote, strongest warrior in Universe 7. Now, I think that by the end of this, whatever ends up happening, Goku as an extension should beat Gas, but Granola should definitely be the one to get the final blow on Alec. Now, by the end of this, I don't see Maki and Oil kind of dying off unless it's Alec that ends up offing them. Now, the reason why I say this, and we're gonna be touching basis on this for another video, is I think Alec is going to finally reveal his motives, his intentions, and everything that he had desired by giving gas and making him be the strongest, because at the same time, if you remember, we don't know what the extension of making gas the strongest is via the Cerulean Dragon. Granola had to give up a portion of his lifespan to become the strongest at one point, right? So the question now becomes, what did Alex sacrifice to ultimately make Gas the strongest warrior in Universe 7? So I think it would only make sense to see Goku fully, without a shadow of a doubt, master Ultra Instinct to such an extent that even in this fight against Gas, Gas can't do anything to touch him, right? It's not to suggest that Goku would be head and shoulders superior, but I think that if Goku were to wear Gas down enough and then just simply beat him by the end, could Goku only reach his hand out to say, hey, you're not really a bad person, your brother is making you do all of this, your brother is lying to you, and I think that you ought to change, only for us to then see if Gas would be willing to kind of make that change for the sake of actually realizing, hey, I've just been a pawn in this entire game for my brother, which by the end of it serves no purpose for me. So I definitely want to see maybe an extension of Ultra Instinct be showcased down the line, but I think that if Goku were to tap into a new form of Ultra Instinct, would that be a little too early? If anything, I would make the argument to say that if you're going to give Goku a new transformation, a new Ultra Instinct form, then it should only happen in the next arc against the next enemy. Now, I understand that some people might say, well, it fits the narrative now because he's fighting the so-called strongest mortal, so what better way than to do that than by giving him a form that kind of combats the strongest, you know what I mean? Which, to emphasize once more, in a fight, I think that Goku will inevitably beat Gas once they end up fighting once more, but the question here becomes, once Gas is beaten, what do we do from there? Is Alec going to do something to kind of 
rid his brother of his duties? Is Alex somehow going to step forward and reveal his true intentions? So what do you think is going to happen once inevitably Gas ends up losing to either Goku or Vegeta or even Granola if somehow he ends up stepping back into this fight? What I think is going to happen here is I don't think Goku is going to flat out kill him because if Bardock himself the Saiyan Savage didn't. I feel as though he's gonna be like, my father didn't kill you, so I'm not gonna either. That's not me. That's not who Goku is. And that's kind of what they've been stressing as the theme for this. Know who you are. And that's not Goku to kill somebody. So I see him tapping into this power, beating him, and then just leaving him there. Just that kind of... I, I think it's gonna be a Lek that's gonna do something to him because it doesn't make sense for Goku. That's not who Goku is. It doesn't line up with that train of thought for this character. And even going back to what would happen earlier, like you said, with the fight that's about to happen here, I feel as though we've, we're gonna see UI like we never have before, but I think, what if he goes more aggro, kind of like the way Ultra Ego is fighting, where it's just, it's more Saiyan aggression. Like, if you're just attacking, you're gonna take some damage, but you're just attacking, 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 taking some damage. It's gotta be all out like we've never seen before, and like we've seen, it's mostly defense, and even Gas has kind of said that before, you're on the defense. Goku himself said, I'm on the defense too much. We're probably gonna see him take some damage, be super aggro, beat him but not kill him it's going to be like a really really drawn out match to the point where i think it's going to push goku to his absolute limit he's not going to be super unfazed like he usually is um i think it's going to push mu whites to something we've never seen before taking damage all of that down to the wire to the point where he probably just outlasts gas by maybe a few seconds and then he's like i beat you but i'm not going to kill you because that's not me and my father didn't do it either full circle we're just gonna leave you you live with the shame and i mean if you saw that in, in the chapter 82 with the prisoners roasting him Goku witnessed that too, which is more humiliating, him killing you and sending you to other world or you gotta live with this failure and everybody knowing about this failure and people roasting you about that years later, years later. So I feel as though Goku witnessing that and on top of that plus his character, it's it kind of makes sense to just leave him alive and let his own brother, like he said, kind of foreshadowing being the one to cook him afterwards. And you see, that's why I think that you should have only the standard level of what we've seen with Mastered Ultra Instinct be what beats Gas, because if Gas fails again, then we can kind of see that he let down Elect twice. First, when he promised that he was going to kill Monaito and Granola and Bardock, and then ultimately failed, and even now, when he had reassured himself in becoming the strongest, and he still couldn't end Vegeta and Granola and Goku's life, you know what I mean? So, I think that by the end of this, it's going to serve a purpose where I believe Goku might utilize the full extent of Ultra Instinct to wear gas down because that's what I feel like you need to do. But by the end of it, I don't really see Goku killing him. It would be a shock to me if Vegeta out of nowhere ends up Hakaiing him, or even if Granola were to do that himself. But I think the person that might be the one to off gas permanently would be his brother Alec. Why? Because you have the reasoning for Alec to kind of insert himself in this position to say, you failed our clan, you failed your only duties to defeat these guys even after I went out of my way to make you the strongest mortal in Universe 7 and you still failed. You've always been a failure, you failed against Bardock, you failed against Goku, you're a disgrace, you need to die, I disown you as a brother, and that's all she wrote with gas, right? That would be a shock to even Maki and Oil, because I could see them kind of being in awe to say, what the hell are you doing? That's our brother, you know? I think that by the end of it, Alec is definitely going to get served. If by anyone, it should be Granola, but my question to you now is, will this battle come down to stamina? Is this battle going to come down to sheer power? Because I think that the only way to kind of go about this is to rattle gas enough to where he becomes discombobulated, he can't focus, and you can tell that he's beginning to get worn down only because Goku's getting the upper hand on him by using Mastered Ultra Instinct. But then again, there could be another evolution that we're not even aware of right now. It could be something of a brand new form. It could be something of a brand new maybe technique. But what do you think? Is it going to come down to attrition? Is it going to come down to stamina, durability, strength, power, and technique? Or is it going to be something completely different to where Goku ends up discovering a new form and uses that to defeat Gas. Based on their current stamina, that's a tough one. I think at most two chapters, but it, it could definitely be a one chapter thing because what they just planted in 82, like I said, do not trust Elec. It, it could be a one chapter thing, but if they start it from the jump, like I said, um, when they start the battle, he has 20 minutes of time to stall and then it's just gonna be an all out brawl. So it could be everything down to one where it's just, okay, we're gonna fight, drain each other out. And it's like, okay, I beat you. I beat you the Saiyan way. I beat you the way my father did. Now what happens from here? It could all fit into one chapter and I see that happening, but um, I definitely could, if it's two, 
then it'll be a drawn out battle but then after that what exactly are you gonna do you gotta build something else up because if you stretch it for two chapters all right now you gotta build up elect and you kind of drain goku for this long what's gonna happen if, if if like we said like if elect turns on him or anything like that otherwise it's the climax of the entire arc so and we know it's not gonna happen it's gonna be drawn out for the rest of the year so i think it could definitely fit into one chapter and then whatever happens after that it's got to be the other fighters coming in or something because goku being pushed to his limits has to happen here to match the hype that they've given gas so uh, that's what i feel like is going to happen it's going to probably be a really uh it's going to be compressed it's going to be one chapter to maybe two at most and then from there we're going to have something else but one chapter definitely makes the most sense showing us all of this hype they just set the stage with 82 it was kind of fillerish and we're gonna see this power up we're gonna see him beat gas the same way we already saw bardock do it and then from there the real foe is gonna emerge you know i have no doubt that this is going to have hopefully a good ending and i hope that they don't rush this because i don't want to see goku achieve a new level of ultra instinct at least not yet if you're going to do that then do it after the movie do it in a brand new arc to where goku actually works for it because if he were to get it right now then it's just a matter of like the strongest topping the strongest topping the strongest that even goes as far as to top that strongest so it just becomes very convoluted in my opinion but even then i have no doubt that we're looking at potentially a new level to ultra instinct and whatever that may be i guess we're gonna have to find out so again thank you all so much for watching thank you all so much for your time if you guys are new to the channel also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning on all notifications by clicking on the bell icon to never miss a single video posted onto the channel on top of giving this video a big fat thumbs up right now by smashing that like button down below if you guys are excited for the next manga chapter and i do also encourage you guys to go on over and subscribe to super saiyan paul's channel i will leave his youtube and twitter links located down in the description box below he's also covering some really cool dragon ball topics on his channel so make sure you guys go on ahead and go on over to his channel and check those out thank you all so much for being here tune back in for more and i'll be seeing each and every single one of you guys down in the comment section below and in the next video take it easy guys and have a great day peace hello did you know that you can stay up to date with the latest Dragon Ball content by simply subscribing to Unrelent Gaming? Also, don't forget to follow on these social media platforms, you sexy son of a bitch. Roshi. Silent Cell. Me and the fans are having a moment. That's right. I know what you want. Extra long, thick Dragon Ball content. Quality reviews with flawless editing. Yeah. Yeah, you'd like that, wouldn't you? You dirty bitch. Roshi, the fuck? God damn it, I need them to subscribe, Cell. And we're demonetized. Yeah, screw it. Let's cut to the video.